basically the behavior health department we work with severe and persistent mental illness um, we work with schizophrenia bipolar and then on the flip side of that you know we work with um, PTSD and intellectual disabilities and there's a wide range so I have 25 clients right now um, that I work with and each one is a completely different individual they are um, each unique to their own way whether you count that diagnosis whether you count you know just their personalities they're all different sometimes it feels like there's more negative to good but when you when you have those those like moments where you see the difference that case management has made in somebody's life like that is that's huge um it's really rewarding um to see that you know case management helps somebody go from being homeless on the street to housing housed stable and successful like that that's that's everybody's end game right there. That's what we want. Part of my supportive services is to help him, to help encourage um, sober living with him. That's one of his treatment goals because he needs to stay housed. In order to stay housed, he has to kind of stay sober. So it kind of goes hand in hand. Good morning. Hi, I'm here. I'm coming down. Okay. Yesterday she was pretty stable, and then, like I say, I went up this morning to beat the traffic and stuff. And how are I'm you holding okay. up? Yeah. So you know my my daily meditation, my mm -hmm. Buddhist recovery network. That I went to AA on Sunday. So um, my observations of him, um, I think he was using or drinking. Um, maybe not today, but I can tell by his demeanors they're different. Um, he's also lost some weight in the from just last week I can tell like in his face um, so I'm worried about his um, self-care because I think he's really focused on his sister right now so with him my main goal um, is to keep him accountable um, and kind of check in accountability really accountability is key um, especially because his sister's passing he needs um, extra support right now to kind of help maintain his sobriety. He's one of my more um, higher functioning clients. You can tell just by his demeanors. He's social, outgoing, um, very smart. He's got a master's degree. Um, very smart guy. I think what built our relationship between the two of us um, was that I was with him when he was at his lowest. In, in 24 hours, my world got flipped. I went from living in a nice two bedroom apartment and you know, I went from that to. He ended up homeless. We were able to get him off the streets and into the shelter of wisdom within five days, which is pretty fast. Sometimes it doesn't always work that way. When I got out of college, I was a caseworker, and she she goes above and beyond, absolutely, without a doubt, with me. She helps me a lot. What's normal for him is living independent, making his own money, um, having a job. That's like what his goals are. So that's what we work on. When we do outreach, this is where we come. We come into Chinatown, down here on River Street and we come try to find our clients. In order to truly understand this population and the struggles that they go to, that they go through, you, you would really have to see it. You have to really see it and be in it to understand it. Um, it's not easy for them. Um, I know a lot of people think that they milk the systems or they try to do this and they try to get one over, but a lot of them, they just, they just can't. They can't function in society the way that society wants them to. She usually hangs out right here so I can just come by and see her and give her whatever I need. Um, but then there's times where um, I can't find her and so she kind of just comes to me. Oh, she's right there. Thank you. Oh, let me roll down my window. 
Payala. I have paperwork for her. Okay. Let's go. Did you forget I was coming? I thought it was yesterday. No, it was today. Oh. Your dad's not he, calling uh, you? He's doing a queue, but he's not, you know, it's fine. Okay. Not Do you have any drugs on you right now? No. Okay. She's been on the streets for so long that for her, it's like I don't she's one of those I don't think she could imagine like what it would be like to not do drugs and like it would completely mess with her transition like she I don't even know that she really could transition um I hold out hope like I would like her to um but right now she has a long way to go to get from where she is to where she could be she's easily triggered by her family that they don't have contact with her it really bothers her but I think if she was clean she would have a better chance of having them contact but every time they don't contact she loses so seeing her sitting over there like doing nothing is hard you know to know that she had she could do these things it's just she's got so much past trauma and hallucinations and stuff that she just can't, she can't get past it yet anyway. You know, she's one that may be on case management services forever. Um, and, and that's okay, you know, that's okay. It's part of the job. If I can give to my 25 clients that I have, if I can give them my 100% whenever I see them and make a positive change, no matter how small, that's enough for me. Hi, how are you? It's so long. I know, how are you doing? Fine, yes, yes, yes. She said you had pain today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where? That's my leg. Yeah? That's what I heard, yeah, yeah. From the surgery? Yeah, from the surgery. You look really good. You look much better. I saw him when he was at the rehabilitation center after he had surgery. And he was there for like four weeks and he was so sad, like in the bed. He wanted to get out of bed and like go do stuff and be home. So seeing him here, it makes me happy because I'm like, yeah, you have home, <laughs> you know? So I know. I was worried about him getting up and down the stairs, but they were saying he's been doing good. So. I'm happy. You have a challenging consumer and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, am I doing the right thing? Am I not doing the right thing? What do I do? How do I handle this? Because those are the thoughts that go through your mind as a case manager. You know, am I making a difference? Am I doing the right thing? And then you see them kind of progress and they get better and they get better and they might relapse or they might come back a little bit, but they continue to grow. And then you're like, okay, now I know why I was doing what I was doing. Like that. That is rewarding um, and sometimes it feels like you know those are few and far between but they're there and and this the rewards are small they're small rewards small moments small like aha like this is it like those moments um, can continue to you know drive you as a case manager um, you have to be really positive you can't look at the negative side of it because there's negatives everywhere you just have to find the positive in the situation and just persevere through it, you know, and that I think is seeing the growth for me is what makes it rewarding. This is the end of my day. Um, now I just got to do notes, notes from all of my clients from the day. I think it went pretty smooth. Um, I mean, we did some chasing, but that's normal normal outreach stuff, having to chase your clients. Um, yeah, I think it went pretty good.